Namaste everyone, welcome to the podcast of yoga and lifestyle medicine. Hope to find you well today. Today I talk about uh, Ayurveda and Ritujariya, the secrets of seasonal eating. Ayurveda teaches us that our body does not exist outside the natural world. It is part of it, integrated into it and dependent on it for its health and well-being. In the modern age, however, we live in such a separate state from nature that we have forgotten the natural and instinctive ways of nourishing ourselves. With industrialization, making one seasonal uh, food available year-round and the fact that we spend more and more time indoors, it is easy to forget what it's like to truly live in harmony with the rhythms of the seasons. So, why is it important to eat seasonally? Each season has a different effect on our bodies. Imagine for a moment having an ice cream while wrapped in scarves and mittens on a winter walk in January. It's not very pleasant, is it? It's freezing. How about eating a bowl of hot barley soup while lunging by a pool on a sweltering August day? That's not very appetizing, right? There is a reason your body reacts to these images. Different types of food help it regain its balance at different times of the year. Acting against these natural tendencies can harm you, both inside and out. When you eat out of sync with nature, even if you are otherwise eating a healthy diet, you can weaken your immune system, gain or lose weight, have poor skin and air quality, and accumulate an increased risk of more serious diseases or imbalances. Eating Ayurvedically in accordance with the seasons not only make you feel good in the moment, it is also a powerful health prevention measure. So Ritucharya is guideline for seasons. As a reminder, and according to Ayurvedic thought, each of us embodies a dominant natural constitution, Vata, Pitta or Kapha or a combination of all three, but it's uh, more rare. Bata types are ruled by the quality of air and space, pita types are ruled by fire and water, and kapha types are ruled by water and earth. Each season either calms or inflames these energies within us, which means our systems can become unbalanced if we don't take steps to adapt our bodies to the weather. Unfortunately, Ayurveda establishes a set of seasonal guidelines now, known as Ritucharya, the world Ritu meaning season, and the world Charya mean guidelines. These guidelines serve as prescription uh, for dietary and lifestyle changes throughout the year, including Ayurvedic detoxification treatments and help us keep our mind clear and soul fulfilled and our bodies full of vitality. According to Ayurveda, the year is divided into two periods, each comprising three seasons. Uttarayana, the cold months, which contain the Sharat, Emanta and Shishira seasons, and Dakshinayana, the hot months, which contain the Pasanta, Grishma and Varsha. Below we look at the guidelines for each of the six seasons so you can live your best all year round. In the West we usually have four seasons, but traditionally in India there are six main seasons. We will discuss the specific rules for four seasons, countries after. We have seasons of accumulation, provocation and soothing for the doshas. So Vata accumulates between mid-May and mid-July and is provoked by uh, mid-July to mid-September and thust between mid-September to mid-November. About Pitta, Pitta accumulates between mid-July to mid-September, is provoked mid-September to mid-November and thust between mid-November to mid-January. Kapha accumulates between mid-November to mid-January and is provoked mid-March to uh, mid-May and thus between mid-May to mid-July. In the Western countries, Ritucharya is characterized by four seasons, like I said uh, before, unlike India where there are six seasons. 
The principle is the same, the dosha go through a cycle of accumulating, aggravating and palliating in different seasons and we have to balance them out with our lifestyle and diet. Ata season runs from autumn and early winter, mid-September right up to January. Kapha season takes place from February to May and Pitta season is June to mid-September. However, we always take our cues from nature. For instance, in northern areas, the winter is longer. We balance our diet through opposite qualities of doshas. For instance, in pitta season, the weather is characterized by hot, light and sharp qualities. So we counter it with cool, heavy and bland food, avoiding sour, spicy, salty and pungent foods. In West, in West, spring is the best time for Panchakarma, which is different than in India, where Vasharitu or monsoon season is the best time. Fall is another good season for these skins. So, for now, what I should do? In Ayurveda, spring is considered Kapha season. This means the earth and the water elements rule during this time. Therefore, even if your constitution is not predominant in Kapha dosha, the increase of water on earth in the environment has the potential to create excess kapha within your body. Not to mention many of us are currently staying home in self-quarantine, which can most certainly throw kapha out of balance due to the repetitive and sometimes stagnant nature of being sheltered in place. The consequence of excess kapha is that you may be feeling less motivated to work and uninspired to stick to your exercise routine. This spring season increased kapha, which is liquefied by the heat of sun, causing the digestive activity to diminish. And since Agni is weak, the diet should consist of easy to digest foods. Have foods that are bitter, astringent and pungent, which will help pacify kapha dosha. You can have garlic, ginger, wheat, barley, rice, lentil, onion, neem, leaves, spices like coriander, turmeric and water with honey. Uh, warm water, hot water, lukewarm water is best. But avoid foods that are heavy to digest like salty, sweet or sour, dairy, deep fried or cold foods. And what about Ayurvedic treatments uh, for this season? You can go for Nasya therapy. Nasya help you clear your respiratory system, remove excess mucus and deal with the repercussions of seasonal allergies that tend to worsen this time of the year. You wash the nostril with a saline solution. It works wonder in many allergies cases and to get rid of mucus. Usually one takes about uh, half, uh, or less a uh, teaspoon or a pinch of salt in the neti pot. You should try uh, before to see if it's uh, too stronger. So after you have to evaluate your uh, salt needs. But you can also add a little sesame oil and a little of the powder ginger or calamus for a stronger action. This opens the head and sinuses and remove phlegm and congestion. You can also apply Udvartana made using several herbs including sandalwood powder, saffron, wet floor among other things and this helps manage the kapha dosha. But this massage, special, special massage for uh, kapha uh, has to be asked um, to a practitioner if you really need it because uh, this is a quite invasive massage and it's also depending on your needs and your uh, constitution that we called prakriti. Sure, avoid sleeping during the day in this season. You can also practice yoga that helps with kapha reduction, like forward bending, camel pose or triangle pose. But I will give you uh, more um, details about yoga practices. Because as a reminder, Ayurveda and yoga are sister sciences and when combined they pack a powerful and harmonious punch. Yoga and asana is a sophisticated system of energy management and when one applies Ayurvedic philosophy to yoga you are able to cultivate the appropriate energy for what your body and mind currently need. 
a kapha balancing yoga practice is indicated if you feel any symptom of excess kapha dosha like heaviness, coldness, lethargy, dull mind, for example. The intention of uh, kapha yoga is to increase feelings of lightness, warmth and vitality while decreasing feeling of heaviness, coldness and lethargy. But to counter kapha dosha, we have to generate uh, internal heat with kapalabhati uh, and uh, ujjayi pranayama. Build internal heat with surya namaskar A and Sur- surya namaskar B. Focus on heart opening posture to relieve congestion in the lungs and create a feeling of spaciousness in, just in the chest. Favor strong standing posture of a seated posture in order to encourage heat, lightness and buoyancy. Include twists to detoxify the digestive tracts and stimulate agni, uh, which is metabolism um, in general. Practice inversions uh, to increase circulation and vitality. Challenge yourself by holding strong postures to build internal heat and motivation. Flow from posture to posture to increase lightness and rapid movement. And don't give up. You're doing something wonderful for your health and well-being. If you want to do your own yoga sequences, I give you some uh, other posture that uh, you can practice. So you can practice Surya Namaskar A, Surya Namaskar B, Crescent Lunge, Crescent Lunge Art Opening Variation, Parivrita Anjana Yasana or Revolve Crescent Lunge, Ashtachandrasana or Crescent Eye Lunge, Ashtachandrasana or other variation, Vatishtatana or side plank, Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2, Udita Trikonasana triangle, Parivrita Trikonasana revolved triangle, Salamba Sarvangasana shoulder stand, Alasana flow, Matyasana fish pose, Supine Matyandrasana supine twist, Pashimottanasana seated forward fold, and finally Savasana. If you have not yet explored yoga through the Ayurvedic lens, we encourage you to do so. Together, the sister sciences will no doubt help to bring a renewed sense of energy and purpose into your life. They can also unlock the door to greater awareness and understanding of the self. Practice safely, practice wisely and stay motivated during this time to encourage Integrate even more kapha balancing methods into your self-care routine. Learn Ayurveda through my program. You will find the details in the description. It is important to note that these are just general guidelines and everyone's body is unique. To get the most out of your spring detox, it is recommended to consult with me or another Ayurvedic practitioner who can help you customize a detox protocol based on your specific dosha and health concern. That's all for today's episode. I hope you found this information helpful and that you will consider incorporating Ayurvedic remedies into your springtime wellness routine. As always, thank you for listening and I will see you next time. You can also find me on yoga and lifestylemedicine.com. Take care.